with Cork.com. I'm sitting here with a guy who's responsible for some, importing some really exciting wines into the United States. Um, you know, we're talking about Italy wine, Italian wine today. A lot of people are familiar with Barolo, Barbaresco, Brunello. They're kind of the usual suspects. He's here to talk about a unique style of wine that you may not be so familiar with. So, um, without further ado, turn it over to you. Introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about you. Good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and my name is uh, Tony Apostolakos. Uh, I'm the export director for uh, Masi. Uh, we're a Venetian winery based in Verona. Uh, Verona, for those who know, is the, the land of Romeo and Juliet, uh, of opera. Uh, it's an hour to the west of uh, Venice. Uh, and we're uh, looking in the heart of Valpolicella, a small wine growing region, but an important region, we believe, because uh, we do something unique uh, there in terms of uh, harvesting uh, the food and the wine. It's uh, uh, a technique uh, called a pessimism where we're drying our grapes uh, and where we make a wine called Amarillo. Awesome. So, a pasamento, for those people that aren't so familiar, take us through the process. What, what is unique to that as opposed to some other table wine? Well, uh, a passamento means the drying uh, of the grape, uh, as I said earlier. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, a standard table wine is uh, you harvest the fruit, you crush it, and you, you make a wine. Uh, I think 98% of the world makes wine with the Bordeaux wine school, we call it. Uh, you, you harvest and you crush. In Verona, it's the opposite. Uh, we don't crush the grapes immediately. Uh, we'll let them sit uh, on bam in bamboo or on bamboo in uh, dry logs. Uh, the grapes will slowly lose a little bit of the moisture, they'll gain more aromatics, more concentration, more flavor, and then we'll crush in February. So uh, we need to be patient with the grapes because we believe these grapes will benefit from it. So not your typical uh, table wine, by no means whatsoever. All right, let's 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 talk about the style of wine then. You said, you know, it's really concentrated flavor. Um, where do you see these fitting in on, you know, at the dinner table? Take us through the flavor profile. What's what is typical for these wines? Well, you know what's typical first is um, uh, this great uh, cherry character that you get in a wine. So fruit and a hint of sweetness is the first thing that you get. But what's also unique is that you're also getting this nice pleasant uh, acidity and this nice freshness to the wine, where it makes the, the, the uh, our wines we believe very uh, versatile in terms of where they should be. Uh, and Amarone, for example, uh, is a rich velvety wine. But it has a nice acidity to it that you can really eat uh, any type of uh, uh, food with it. Um, not light, delicate food, but more food with a little bit more substance. Okay. Um, you know, Amarone, for people who are familiar with it, it's, it's a red wine. Uh, what we have in front of us here, though, it's not red at all. Um, no, no. It's a little little unique for a Masi, I take it. It's unique for us. Uh, the technique isn't unique, but to make a white wine, typically we're not a white wine producer. Uh, but we think that the benefit of a passamento drying uh, the fruit on red grapes uh, shouldn't just be restricted to the red grapes. So we decided to take uh, another grape uh, of our area called Verduzzo and uh, dry it to a small degree and blend it with Pinot Grigio so we can uh, see if the wine will improve. And we felt that the wine dramatically improved. Uh, now a simple table wine has a little bit of the character of mangoes and tropical fruits and a little honey. And it's really interesting. So it's a new wine for us. It's only been a few minutes. And, uh, we decided to uh, take it to the next step so we can introduce people to uh, the benefits of uh, this Beautiful. You mentioned Pinot Grigio, which so many people are familiar with from this region. Um, let's talk about the red grapes, though, in the region. You're not exactly growing your Pinot Noir, your Merlot, your Cabernet, are you? No, no. The, uh, you know, for, for Masi, it's about indigenous varietals. And what grapes were born there are the grapes that we want to uh, cultivate. Vinify and Corvina, of course, is the main variety uh, of, uh, of this area. Uh, Rondinelle, Malnada are other great varieties. Pinot Noir, Merlot, Cabernet uh, really aren't from uh, Verona, so uh, you can find those grapes there, but they weren't born there, so we decided not to, uh, uh, to, uh, to play with those grapes, so to speak. But Corvina is the main variety that we produce. All of our red wines are based with Corvina. Gotcha. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit about Masi as a producer. I not exactly new to the block. I know that it's a brand that's been around for a while. Uh, take, us, take us through the history of the estate a little bit. Of course, well, Masi uh, was the name of a vineyard in Valpolicella in the 1700s, late 1700s. And a family named Boscaini purchased this property and decided to name the winery Masi, as opposed to 
was hanged in the family name. And from the 1700s, 1772, the family decided to uh, continue the, uh, or try to interpret Venetian culture through the wines. So over uh, time, close to now uh, seven generations, the family acquired the properties in the region, from Bartolino to Suave to La Fortella to Uri, uh, always dedicated to preserving indigenous varieties and to improving the techniques of the area. Great, great. So outside of the white wine, you said, you know, your major focus is red wine. Is it one Amarone de Mo Falcocello that you're producing? Do you have several? We have several. We, we have, in fact, we produce five different styles of, of Amarone. We're so proud to, uh, to be really the only uh, producer to have that type of red of Amarone. And each one is a different interpretation of the Amarone. We have uh, an Amarone that's more modern in style. We have several that are a little bit more uh, terroir inspired. We have some from the Serego Alleghetti property with cherry wood. We really try to expand 